I've heard there's a minimum airspeed to fly in icing conditions. What is it? And what protection does it provide? This time in the ABS hangar, minimum speed during icing conditions. Airplanes certificated for flight in icing conditions have a number of limitations that must be observed for that known ice certification to be valid. These limitations are found on the type certificate data sheet for the aircraft and in the pilot's operating handbook limitations section. In known ice barons, the minimum airspeed in icing conditions is 130 knots indicated airspeed. In the case of aftermarket systems, the limitations are contained in the FAA-approved POH supplement for that modification. In the case of this known ICE-approved STC for 1984 and later A36s and G36s, the minimum airspeed for operation in icing conditions is 110 knots, indicated airspeed. Factory installation or aftermarket ICE certification includes a minimum airspeed to fly when in icing conditions. But what protection does this minimum airspeed provide? It's all about angle of attack. As the airplane slows down, its angle of attack increases. If ice is accumulating on the aircraft at a high angle of attack, airframe ice will collect on the underside of the wings and tail aft of the de-icing systems, as well as the underside of engine nacelles and the fuselage where ice protection systems cannot shed the ice. Ice buildup on unprotected areas will affect aerodynamic efficiency, add weight, could begin to interfere with control surface movement, and may make a tailplane stall more likely. Flying at a faster speed generally means a lower angle of attack and less ice accumulation on unprotected parts of the aircraft. The minimum airspeed during icing conditions is designed to limit ice accumulation mainly to those areas where de-icing equipment can be effective. Now let's cover what the minimum airspeed during icing conditions does not do. It does not make ice accumulation systems any more capable of removing ice. The minimum ice penetration speed reduces accumulation of ice on areas the de-ice system cannot affect. But for example, the de-ice system still needs to run continuously in moderate icing accumulation. It does not provide total protection from ice-contaminated stalls. Any ice contamination on the wings and tail can result in higher stall speeds and unpredictable aircraft control and handling, even in protected areas. Flying at the minimum icing conditions airspeed does not expand the airplane's ice protection envelope. Known ice certification remains valid only in moderate or lower rates of ice accumulation is not valid in supercooled liquid droplet conditions and requires all certificated ice protection equipment to be operational and in use when in icing conditions. Flight at this airspeed will not blow away ice that is already collected aft of protected areas. And flying at or above the minimum airspeed during icing conditions does not provide additional ice protection for airplanes not certificated for flight in icing conditions. Known ice certification includes items like heated fuel vents and stall warning vanes, propeller and windshield de-ice, and other protections. Sure, in an emergency, a non-ice airplane may have better chances by flying at or above the minimum airspeed for icing conditions. 
but flying at the speed does not substitute for the full known ice certification. How then might you use the minimum during icing conditions limitation airspeed? If you are going to climb through a layer of suspected icing conditions, retract landing gear and any flaps before entering clouds or visible moisture with all anti-ice systems running. And be at or above the minimum speed for flight in icing before entering potential icing conditions. Maintain that speed using de-ice systems as needed until you exit icing conditions. If you're going to descend through suspected icing conditions, maintain at or above minimum icing speed before entering icing conditions, gear up and flaps up, and with all anti-ice systems active. Maintain speed as you descend through the ice using de-ice systems as needed to remove accumulation until you exit icing conditions. If you find yourself in icing conditions for an extended time and for any reason cannot maintain this minimum speed in level flight, lower the nose to accelerate to minimum icing speed and accept the altitude loss that results. If you're in icing conditions during an approach, don't extend gear or flaps until exiting icing conditions. You won't be able to climb on one engine in icing conditions. In fact, you'll need to descend at minimum icing speed or higher until exiting icing conditions, resulting in a rapid rate of descent on one engine. This video is part of the American Bonanza Society's Beechcraft Essential Systems and Techniques course, free to members in the ABS Online Learning Center. Log in or become a member at bonanza.org. Don't miss another edition of the ABS Hangar. Subscribe to the American Bonanza Society YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in the ABS Hangar.